Hi, my name is David Vanderpool, and today we're going to talk about application modernization using the IBM Transformation Advisor. Um, so when we talk about application modernization in this context, we're going to be talking about moving your traditional WebSphere applications um, over to Liberty running in a Docker container and then hosting that on IBM Cloud Private. Uh, and these steps can work as well if you want to host these on um, the IBM Kubernetes services, which is on the public IBM Cloud, uh, or other services as well. So um, we have four steps that we generally go through when we're uh, modernizing app like applications. Uh, step one is analysis. Uh, we analyze the applications, and that's where the transformation advisor does most of the work. Uh, and this is an automatic tool that we run against your existing WebSphere environment, uh, and it'll help you size the work, see how difficult and feasible it is to migrate your applications. Uh, and then that goes to step two, which will help you prioritize. So with the information from step one, you make business decisions on prioritizing which workloads you want to move to the cloud, uh, either low-hanging fruit or the ones that are in more active development, uh, steps like that. And step three is doing the actual work, which is libertizing. Uh, and we use the transformation advisor with a lot of its suggestions uh, and accelerators to do that. And as well, we have the WebSphere application migration toolkit, which is, which is an Eclipse plugin, which can help you do a lot of the, um, the actual development work if required. And then step four is containerization, um, taking that Liberty application once it's up and running, hosting it in a Docker container and pushing that to IBM Cloud Private. Uh, and the transformation advisor provides a lot of accelerators for that as well. So we're going to go through a demo of the Transformation Advisor, as well as take an application from start to finish, uh, running on TWAS, and then moving that to Liberty, running in a Docker container, and then pushing that to IBM Cloud Project. Uh, here's a few screenshots for the Transformation Advisor. Uh, it'll give you an inventory report of all the applications you have, um, what features they have, what's uh, available, and we're going to go through, um, through a demo of this as well. Uh, so what good things the transformation does. It scans your WAS environment, gives you, uh, it, it looks through each one of your ear files and your server configuration and says what's compatible, what's not compatible. Um, for the things that aren't compatible, how hard is it to change uh, based on our real world experience. We've been doing this for many, many years, so we've kind of put our best guess as to how, uh, how long it'll take you to, to make those migrations or how long it'll take services if you decide to uh, hire IBM or somebody else to do the work. Um, and then uh, we also tell you what technologies your application is using, code modifications. We we'll also take your server configuration uh, and produce a server XML file, which is used for um, creating those all of your server configurations. It'll take that from WAS and put that into Liberty. Uh, and then, then again, there's some bonus accelerators, uh, starter Docker files, Kubernetes deployment, and help charts that that will create specifically for your application. So let's get to the fun stuff, which is a demo. Um, so I've got I'm running on a Mac, so TWAS doesn't run on a Mac, uh, so I've got it running in a Docker container just so I can use it for a demo purpose. Uh, so just pull that in here. So this is my WAS 855 environment, uh, and I've got a couple applications installed here. I've got a couple applications here. I've got Hello World, uh, Plants by WebSphere 7, and Plants by WebSphere 8. Uh, if you've been around the IBM world for a while, you've noticed that we use the Plants by WebSphere application. Uh, for a lot of demos, it's just uh, a simple application that we use. Uh, there's two versions of it. One of them worked on WAS 7, and then recently, we, relatively recently, we upgraded it to run on version 8. Um, and we'll see the differences between the applications from what the report uh, produces. So on localhost, I've got this application running. Uh, you can see it's connected um, here. It's a simple gardening application. Um, We've also got some resources here. We've got our data sources and our uh, JDBC providers. Um, and these are all resources that the application has. So I ran, now we also have the transformation advisor, which I've got running in my uh, IBM Cloud private environment. Uh, you do have to log into IBM Cloud Private to access the Transformation Advisor, uh, but I've got it running here. So I'm going to create a new workspace, uh, and then you can do a collection. Uh, this is good if you have multiple cells, if you want to uh, separate them logically. You're going to be running this tool over and over again. So this is the Transformation Advisor. Step one is the data collector. So there's a tool you can download uh, for various operating systems. 
uh, and um, this tool you would download and you would run it on your environment um, where you've got QWAS running. So if you've got it running in your Linux machine, AX, Solaris, or Windows, you just download this tool uh, for that one. You put it on that machine, you unzip it, uh, and you run this command, which is the uh, transformation advisor. You point to your WAS home directory, uh, you give it the user, the profile you want to migrate, username and password. Uh, if you're doing a cell, uh, an ND environment, you want to point to your deployment manager uh, profile. And if it's a, a base one, you can just point to whatever the server is. Now, this will automatically upload the results to the transformation advisor. Um, however, I've got a firewall between my WAS and my transformation advisor, so I'm going to upload it manually. So I've already uploaded it. and uh, Now, this tool can run between 10 and 10 minutes and 10 hours. Uh, really depends on how many applications are in your cell, uh, but it's about five, five to 10 minutes per application. So if you've got 50 applications in uh, in your cell, don't uh, don't wait up for it. Go get a cup of coffee, uh, run it overnight. Uh, it can take a long time to run. Um, so here we've got, you can see the same applications that we saw in the WAS environment. We've got a Hello World application. This is uh, a very simple servlet application, nothing special on it. Uh, you can see it's categorized as simple. Um, then we've got the Plants for Web Sphere 7 and Plants for Web Sphere 8. So looking at this one, it's categorized it as moderate complexity. Uh, there's a tech match, it's at 90%, which means there's some technologies in this, this application is using in traditional WAS that's not available in Liberty. Um, it's got some dependencies. These are external dependencies, uh, database connections, JMS, MQ, uh, LDAP, different things like that. Uh, so if you're going to be hosting this inside your the same network, you don't really care about this. It's going to be the same connections as before. But if you're moving to a public cloud, uh, you're going to have to create some kind of channel to to allow those uh, that access. Uh, number of issues we'll get through. Uh, development costs. This is how long we think it'll take you to migrate your application, and then total development effort. And that's because we just add a buffer uh, on there. You can also change the overhead cost. Uh, we've got it hard coded to five. Um, you know, sometimes I change it to three or, or two. Essentially, there's a big learning curve as you're doing this. So your first application might take five days. Um, but if you're doing multiple of these, uh, it's gonna, your uh, overhead is going to go decrease significantly. So if we look at our, our application, we're going to see what issues it actually found. So it found a couple technology issues. It says uh, Jack's RPC is not available. So that's one feature that's not available in Liberty. Uh, and that's a pretty serious one because it's just not there. Um, some WebSphere APIs aren't available, so the application is using some specific WebSphere APIs. Um, and then the transaction propagation is not supported. So uh, it's detected these inside the code. The main one is the JAX RPC, and um, we've estimated the development effort at about two days. Uh, we had external dependencies, so it noticed that it's connecting to a database. It's got some security, Java Mail. Uh, different things like that. Again, only really relevant if you are moving to uh, an external cloud. We've got a couple of reports here that are pretty interesting. So this technology report, it's going to list all the technologies on the left-hand side that the uh, transformation advisor found for that specific application. Uh, and then it's going to say what's supported in different versions of WebSphere. Uh, what we really only care about is this WebSphere traditional and Liberty, um, these two columns here because uh, that's where we're going from and to. Uh, and the main one here is Jack's RPC is missing. Uh, there's various things that you can do to, to solve that. There's the analysis report. And this goes into great detail as to exactly where it found each one of those issues. So again, we're focusing on Jack's RPC. Uh, we're going to show the results. It's showing exactly which class files and what line numbers uh, have each one of these uh, Jack's RPC in it. Uh, and then if you go to the show rule help, it gives you your different options. And the, the help is actually quite useful. Uh, we've, this is based on real world experience when we're actually doing the migrations as to the recommended approach. Uh, for Jax RPC, you've got three options. You can migrate from Jax RPC to Jax WS. That's recommended. Option two is you can stick with the unsupported Jax RPC uh, and include your own Jax RPC libraries. Of course, that specific libraries would not be supported by IBM because it's open source, but um, that's another option. And then option three is continue to use traditional WebSphere application server. And then there's uh, a lot more details in there. 
So there's lots of information you can get from here. And the inventory report uh, basically just tells you what's inside of your application. It tells you how many servlets, JSPs, uh, EJB jars, and different things like that. So a long time ago, uh, somebody Mike upgraded the PlantStar WebSphere application, so we've got our version 8 uh, of the tool. Uh, and you can see that there's no JAX RPC. So it's only got a couple issues with uh, Sun uh, RI Engine, which is removed. And um, yeah. so the analysis report a little bit different. So now this is your overview of your applications. Uh, for the sake of time, we're going to migrate this version 8 version because of all of the technologies uh, that it has within the application are supported on Liberty. So we go to our migration plan. And here's a list of accelerators. So the tool has automatically built a server XML for me, uh, a Docker file, Helm charts, deployment, YAML for deploying to Kubernetes, um, a Jenkins file for our Jenkins build, uh, and a Palm file if you want to build it with Maven. Uh, so it doesn't extract the uh, ear file, so you would have to upload your own ear file. Um, that's OP8. Uh, and also have to upload your own DB2 driver. So so once those are uploaded, basically I can download all of these uh, files in one big bundle. You can see I've run this a few times, but I'll call it C5. So here we've got all the files that were listed there. Uh, now there are a few changes that we're going to have to make and I'll go through some of those. So let's first look at the server XML file. Here it lists all the features that uh, it thinks that your application needs. Uh, one thing we'll notice is for DB2, the password is not extracted. Uh, that's on purpose so that we don't have uh, users' passwords flying all over uh, the web. So you're going to have to re-include your, your password for that database instance. Um, so I'm going to pull that up from another document. So I'm going to replace that with, um, with my proper password. Also, there's a weird thing with uh, DB2 that you might need to include the username and password as properties. Uh, you can encrypt those, of course, and it's suggested, but um, I won't just for the sake of time. Uh, also, when it detects that it, the application is using JPA, uh, it defaults to the highest version of JPA. However, I know from experience that this specific application uses JPA 2.0, uh, so it, I'm going to modify that here because the application won't work without it. Uh, also, one thing that the tool didn't pick up is that this one data source is non-transactional, uh, and that's another change that, that's required. So there are a few changes that you might need to make in it, but you can see that it still accelerated the process quite a bit. Now, if I go back to these files here, I'm going to look at my Docker file. Put it open here. Uh, here, if you're not familiar with Docker files, it's basically a list of uh, how to build the Docker container. So it's going to start off with a base WebSphere Liberty supported uh, Docker container. Um, it's going to modify it by adding my new server XML file into that location. It's going to modify it by adding my application in. It's also going to copy my config in. In this case, that's my DB2 drivers. Uh, and then it's going to run a script, which is going to install um, all these features into Liberty. Again, I have to change the JPA version from 2.1 to 2.0. Uh, 
So we can go to the command line. Um, Five. Bundle, and we're in the same location. So to build the Docker container, you do a Docker build dot, and then you give it a tag. And I'm going to call it Plants by WebSphere. And you can see it running through each one of the steps within that Docker file. Okay, their Docker bot, it's built. So now we want to run this to see if we can get our application running. Um, so I'm going to do a Docker run. I know I want to use port 9080. Um, I'm going to use port 9081 because I currently have the traditional web sphere running on port 9080. So locally it's going to be port 9080, but within the container it's going to be, locally it's going to be port 9081, uh, but within the container it's going to be, um, and then I'm going to run, give it a name. Demo. And then give the, specify the container I want to use. So here you can see, and this is the typical startup logs for, um, for Liberty. host web sphere. There we go. You can see our application up to running locally. So now that we've got this running locally, we can take a look at our manifest. We got a deployment YAML. So this uh, deployment YAML is basically the script you need to push this to IBM Cloud Private. Uh, there's lots of demos on this, but um, specifically we need to get this image onto the Docker registry that is uh, out on my uh, my Kubernetes environment. So this is the image that it's expecting. Uh, we could change this to anything, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to kill this, get a new one, and I can do um, Docker tag. I can find that image that I have. The Docker tag. And I want to rename my existing one to this. So now it'll duplicate the image and, and give it basically an alias. And I'm going to a Docker login on cluster.icp. 500. This is the Docker registry that exists on my IBM Cloud Private environment. And then do a Docker push. And this is going to push it up into the cloud. So now that it's there, go back to my deployment YAML and I'm going to copy this script and I'm going to go and go to my IBM Cloud Private which is my cluster.acp log in here I'm going to move myself down here there's a little um, Create Resources button up here. And here you can copy any script into here and run it really quickly. Generally you'd put this into a CI CD pipeline or something like that so you could um, automate the, the process. Uh, but for a quick demo you can make any changes here. So if I go to my workloads and deployments, I can see my application plans by Webster 8. Move myself back up here. And you can see that it's zero minutes ago, so basically it's refreshed it. I already had this running before, uh, but it's refreshed it, downloaded a new container, uh, pulled the new instance of it, created my container, 
and start a bit. And then I can go to my log file and I can see the application running here. Now it's going to take a few seconds to start up, just like it did from the command line. Uh, it's going to look exactly the same. And we can look around. One other thing that it created was the services. Um, so it's going to my plant by WebSphere 8. And what it's done is it's taken port 9080. And because you can have lots of things running in your Docker container, it's basically mapped that to another port um, through the proxy. So if I want to access port 9080, I have to go to port uh, 31743. So you see here, this is our Liberty server, and I just need to put in the context root for that Docker container that we just created. The server has not started yet. Oh, I spelled it wrong. And there we go. We've got our application moving from uh, traditional web sphere running on-prem, and now this is running on IBM Cloud Private in Liberty in a Docker container.